Hey everybody, today we're going to look at how to build a ship in Dungeon Draft. So we're going to start by coming over here to the terrain tools, selecting the water brush, uh, using the default selected square. We can set our colors to be whatever we want. I kind of like the default colors. Uh, and then, boom, we'll fill out the entire thing. And if you don't like this outer edge uh, that you get on the water, you can actually click and drag outside of the normal window. It goes beyond uh, the, the visible window and you can do it like that. You'll still get this little bit of outer edge stuff there, but uh, it's a little bit better for you. But I kind of like the way that that effect looks, so I'm going to leave it. And then we're going to want to get into actually building the ship. So we're going to come over here to the floor shape tool, and we're going to select the heart icon here, which is the point select tool for building out floors. Now, I kind of want the ship to be about four squares wide at the tail end, uh, and so since this is a 20 block tall or 20 square tall uh, viewport that we have that we use eight uh, what's that eight yeah eight on either side uh, so we'll just go one two three four five six seven eight and then we'll come one two three four down now when you want to make the curved outer edge of the ship, the way that you do that is to pull out from the front, and I want this to be about six back from here. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we want to go to the middle block uh, or the middle square from where everything opens. So that would be one, two, that would be here. And then we want to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, before you click, press and hold shift, you'll see the color of the line change from yellow to this uh, purplish pink color. That means that you can uh, change the curve of the line. So what we're going to do is click and drag down. And we want the ship at its middle to go about a square farther out than uh, the tail end of the ship. So we're going to keep dragging and then pull back a little bit so that we get a nice curve we can see that that line now goes about a square farther out. And then we'll release our click, click again, and then we'll do basically the same thing by coming over here to the corner, still holding shift to make sure that we can still arc it, and then try to get basically the same uh, positioning. And that looks about even. So we'll do another click to finalize it, and boom, you've got a pretty decent looking ship already. now. Your floor is underwater. Your ship has partially sunk already. Now, how are we gonna fix that? We're gonna come over to the terrain brush and the water brush, and you'll see that the water brush also has a similar uh, heart icon, so that means that we can do point selection uh, for adding or, in this case, removing water. So if you come out, you see you've got your yellow dot as per usual. If you press and hold Alt, you'll see that it changes to be blue. Now, uh, we're going to start by adding a point here. We don't actually have to hold Alt yet. We don't have to hold Alt until we're making the final connection once we've gone all the way around the boat and we're about to connect back here. But we do want to press Shift so we can do the same curve for our ship. And we'll just make sure that the uh, lines match up with where the boat walls are. We'll make a point there. And then we'll come over here and do the same thing. Get that to match. And now that we're making our final connection, now is when we want to press and hold Alt, see that change from yellow to blue, and then boom. Now you will see that there's a little bit of a weird water thing that goes up here. This is a bit of a bug with the water tool currently. Uh, there's a little bit that you can do. You can change back to uh, a brush mode uh, of, of the water brush, or you can try to do something like that. That occasionally for me has fixed issues with it but it doesn't seem to be doing anything right now um but you can work on changing the shallow color and the deep color if you want that might be able to mitigate it uh, a little bit let's see if changing to a, a similar color does much to help us oh yeah so that definitely made it look a little bit more water you can still see the triangles but it's less clear now so we're going to leave it like that um and then from here it comes down to Kind of just making the boat however you want now a lot of classic pirate ships have kind of like this raised back area here and maybe even a raised front area over here let's look at how we might do something like that by coming up here and uh the way that 
uh, Megasplute did it in his uh, Zebic time lapse video was to use um, the bar object. So actually, let me bring that up. We'll come into objects, check out the tavern, and you see that he had this bar table and he rotated it like this and then placed it there uh, to give it a kind of raised look. We're going to actually use the wall tool because it does some cool stuff in terms of making sure that uh, light doesn't pass through and all that. And so this doesn't look particularly great uh, to begin with, but if we pull back two additional walls, actually that's going the wrong direction. We wanna go this way. Uh, so now it kind of starts to look like we've got a raised platform. Let's do that all as one piece. There we go, that looks a little bit better. And now we're gonna go back to the object tool and we're gonna change back to this. We're gonna go to all. You're gonna see where we have the wooden stairs object to do. Just so that we can make it a little bit more clear that that area is lifted off of the main area of the ship getting into a lot of boat assets down here, which we'll want to come back to, but not just yet. Here we go, here's the stairs. Let's find a short set of stairs, like, those don't look that different. I guess they are a little bit though. Uh, we'll go with this one. Now we want to expand the size, and thankfully objects typically place underneath the walls. And in this particular situation, you'll see that we can't get it to line up quite right because of the snap. So we're gonna turn off snap down here or by pressing the S key on our keyboards. And we're gonna come back in and make sure that this fits. We don't want it to expand out beyond the ship. So we'll do that and we'll place another one over here. And boom, it suddenly looks like we have this lifted up uh, additional area for the ship and let's go back and take a look at some of these boat assets so we've got mast a handful of mast options I kind of like the way that this one looks and so we're gonna use that we're gonna turn uh, our snap back on because generally speaking I like having snap on and we'll place the mast about there I don't know that much about old ships so if none of this makes sense uh, you know, don't mind me. You can do it however you want. Uh, and this is labeled as mass two, but it seems more like the steering wheel for the boat. Uh, and so I'm going to put that back there. And then classic thing is to have kind of this back here to, I don't know, let water fall through. I don't know what these are for. Uh, some kind of hatch. Um, and then we're going to use this capstan, which I think is used to pull up the anchor. Um, so we kind of want that to be a little bit big, because uh, pulling up an anchor, that's hard work. Uh, and we'll use this. And see, it's popping up above the capstan, so we're gonna change that to be under, so that it will appear underneath, right there. And we'll just rotate that a little bit, so it all kind of lines up. There we go. Now we've got the anchor on our ship and let's just add a uh, cool pointy boy right here. Shrink that down. And I don't really like the way that that's going underneath the wall. So we're going to come up here and set the layer to be above wall. And yeah, that's much better. Let's try to get this size properly. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty much exactly what I wanted. Um, and then, of course, your ship can't be complete without cannons. Now, one thing after you have adjusted your layers that you're always going to want to keep an eye on is uh, if you still want the next objects you place to be placed in the same position. I don't necessarily want the cannons to be over the walls. I want it to look like they're going through them. Uh, and so we're going to come back and go back to our normal user layer one. And we're going to place couple cannons here. I don't know how big a cannon is, but I'm gonna say about that big is probably reasonable. Shout at me in the comments if you're a big time old ship nerd and that this doesn't make any sense. Okay, 
So there we go. Now we've got some cannons. Uh, we've got our anchor. We've got our steering wheel. We've got kind of cool access hatch. Uh, if you want to recreate uh, one of the worst seasons of Game of Thrones, you could come and you could put a big ballista on the front end to uh, shoot dragons that you forgot or to shoot dragons that forgot that you existed. There we go. It's hard for me to remember the logic of that season sometimes. Um, and so from here, one other thing that you can do is actually come down and create a new level. And we're going to say that this is the sale level. We're going to put all of our sales here so we can set them to be lower opacities. But we do still want to see our underneath layer. So we click compare levels, have the reference level. We'll make that fully visible so we're not struggling to see where anything is going. We're going to come back to our object tool and we're going to place one of these big mass right there. Okay, so now that we've got that done, uh, let's unclick compare levels here and we're going to make this a little bit more transparent and see how that looks because ultimately the effect that we want is for the mass to still be here, but for our players to be able to see everything that's going on underneath the sail. So you get the effect of having a sail, but uh, none of the lost visuals if you're actually trying to do combat on this map. And we can zoom in and see, yeah, that this is all coming together pretty reasonably. Let's see, are there any other fun ship things? Oh yeah, I remember. Uh, let's drop back down to our ground level so the sail goes away so it's not in our way anymore And you can also just click this drop down to flip between the two if you want and uh, that does turn compare levels off So if you want that on you'll have to go back and select it again, uh, but one thing I realized is that Here let's zoom out a little bit now. Where is? Everything there we go now stuff showing back up. I was looking at this and realized that this kind of looks like uh, a place that you would keep a rowboat. So you could either do that behind the ship, like let's say right there, and then we find one of the rowboat effects. There should be a navy option or like marine option down here. There we go. Here's the boat. So if we turn this around, that feels like a better positioning. We're going to change this uh, object placement tool back to over. And then, boom, we've got a boat placed back there that's not in the way of any of our cannons. Uh, it could be an easy escape route for uh, the captain if they're the boss or something like that. Uh, let's see, do we have anything else in here that we want to add? Of course, you can go and you can add more access hatchways. You could add uh, a visible door in here if you wanted that leads into the captain's quarters. You can make a separate level that appears underneath this level that is the interior portion of the ship by just tracing the exact same lines, all that kind of stuff. You can put these uh, desks in there for the captain. Uh, maybe he's the only one with an actual bed. All the others have uh, kind of the sleeping cots. Or, I mean, if you wanted this to be like full Pirates of the Caribbean, you could just put a bunch of skeletons around or something like that. Um, yeah, you can add some uh, floating effects, some flotsam if there's been a, a ship battle going on or something like that. Uh, or if they've been attacked, or who knows. Uh, you can use the object scatter tool to put more of this stuff out there. Uh, let's see, you can put some of that around. That all makes sense. No, uh, one last thing that I did want to show is the effect that using a wall here instead of uh, the bar will give you is that if you want to do a night map, like let's say that it was much closer to the evening and that the whole world was, was going dark and you want to put in a light tool is that if you have a, let's actually add a lantern up here is there a light option no but living quarters probably would still show it and i would be wrong <laughs> okay let's see if dungeon has the specific light that i'm looking for no those are all candles i want the lantern 
whatever, we'll just put a candle back there for the sake of time. If you had a candle, I'm going to put this over the wall just so that it's more visible. If you had these kind of positioned. So if we take those two lights where they are and come over here to the light tool and come in and place them here, you can see that the dynamic lighting starts to push into the wall, but it doesn't go off. So you get more separation from where the captain's area is. And this starts to look much more like it's a, a different area that's underneath the current level where the captain is. Uh, and that's pretty much everything that you need to know to put together a ship. Uh, be sure to check back for more tips or tricks later on.